It was the 25th of March, 1858. For the previous fortnight, a 14-year-old girl, Bernadette Subaru, had made her way to the edge of her town, to a rocky, unimportant area of her village, and there she had received apparitions of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, and now, on the 25th of March, the 16th apparition, the Virgin gave her most important message, something she was instructed to share with her parish priest. And so, as quick as she could, Bernadette returned from the site of the apparitions. She ran. She ran into the room where the old priest was sitting at his desk and blurted out at the top of her voice, I am the Immaculate Conception. I am the Immaculate Conception. That is the name of the beautiful lady who has been appearing to me. Ever since then, priests and theologians and saints have been reflecting on those words because they are strange words. But on this Pentecost Sunday, I want to try and show how these words, I am the Immaculate Conception, express the union the closeness, the intimate relationship that exists between the Blessed Virgin Mary and God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Most Blessed Trinity. I don't know if you've ever heard this before. Occasionally, priests use Pentecost Sunday to tell people how the Holy Spirit is the forgotten person of the Holy Trinity and that we should pray to the Holy Spirit and call on the Holy Spirit a lot more than we actually do. I'm not going to say this today because I don't think it's true. And actually, the great saints of the church don't think it's true either because they've realized a great secret. And that is, devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary is, in reality, a type of devotion to God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is not the forgotten member of the Most Holy Trinity because the entire Catholic devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary can be seen as a devotion to the Holy Spirit. And why? It's all because of those five words Our Lady herself said at Lourdes, I am the Immaculate Conception. Mary didn't say, I was immaculately conceived, I was born without sin. Instead, she said, I am the immaculate conception. She is saying, I am what it is to be the sinless outflowing of the perfect love of God. She's saying, and I'll repeat that, I am what it is to be the sinless outflowing of the perfect love of God. And here's the interesting thing. Mary can say this of herself, but so can the Most Holy Spirit, albeit in a deeper way. The, Holy, the Most Holy Spirit can say, I am the sinless, perfect, eternal outflowing of the love between God the Father and God the Son. The Holy Spirit is an uncreated conception, an eternal one. He is the prototype of every sort of human conception in the universe. He is the most holy conception, infinitely holy, immaculate. The Holy Spirit can say, I am the uncreated immaculate conception. And I'm not inventing this myself. In particular, it was Saint Maximilian Kolbe who reflects deeply on this. It's him who has inspired and given the content of this sermon. The Most Holy Spirit, God the Holy Ghost, can say, I am the uncreated Immaculate Conception. The Virgin Mary, in calling herself the Immaculate Conception, is saying how united, how close she is to God the Holy Spirit. She is the created icon of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit completely overshadowed her from the first instant of her conception. He took possession of her. He united himself to her in a unique way. He filled her soul with himself. 
the Holy Spirit designated Mary as the created instrument for his work in our world. He uses her to cooperate in bringing Jesus Christ, the Son of God, into the world. And he still uses her as the instrument to bring all the graces that Jesus Christ won for the world by his death on the cross. And that is pure St. Louis Marie de Montfort. That's taken from his writings. Sometimes you hear Our Lady described as the spouse of the Holy Spirit, but those words don't do justice to her union with the Holy Spirit. And it also suggests that Our Lady had two husbands, the Holy Spirit and St. Joseph, which is ridiculous. It's better, I humbly suggest, for us to think of Mary as the perfect instrument of the Holy Spirit. A human creature, yes, but a human creature completely overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, possessed by him to the extent that he always works through her to achieve his work. This might sound like very high theology and very complicated, but actually we make the same point every time we say the Hail Mary. We say, Hail Mary, full of grace. And that means, Mary, you are full of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And that last bit is the most important here. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. That is not past tense. We are not saying, Mary, you were blessed by God when you gave birth to Jesus. No, we are saying right now, Mary, you are blessed because the Lord Jesus always comes to us through you. Jesus always comes to us through Mary. That is because Mary is so united to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, having used Mary to form our Lord as a baby, has not stopped using her as his instrument of bringing him to each one of us. And so every grace we receive, every prod we receive to do a good deed, every answer to prayer, every gift from heaven, it always comes to us with the cooperation of Mary, who is the instrument of the Holy Spirit in giving all the graces that our Lord has won for us on the cross. And so... On this Pentecost Sunday, we turn to our Blessed Lady. We acknowledge her as a masterpiece of God, his greatest creature outside of the created humanity of Jesus Christ. The creature he has chosen to unite with himself in order to bring us the Saviour and all the graces that the Saviour has won for us. When we see Mary, her wisdom, her understanding, her knowledge, her piety, her fear of the Lord, her counsel, her fortitude. In seeing her, we, are, we see a created reflection of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has so possessed Mary that any devotion or praise that we have towards Our Lady is really and truly praise towards Him. She is His masterpiece the channel through which he flows, the gate through which he chooses to sanctify us and make us holy. Our challenge in life is to become more and more like the Blessed Virgin because the extent that we are like her, the extent that we resemble her, the extent to which our souls are like hers, pure and immaculate, that is the extent to which Jesus Christ will be formed in us. How are you doing on that one? That's our mission, to become more like her and becoming like her to be transformed into him, into Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit who delights in Mary and is so united to Mary as to always to bring Jesus through her and with her cooperation. So devotion to Our Lady is not an obstacle to our blessed Lord. Absolutely not. In fact, the opposite. Devotion to Mary is the best way, the fastest way to receive a more perfect union with our Lord. Today, we renew our devotion to Mother Mary, spouse of the Holy Ghost, praying that this same Holy Spirit will come upon us and transform us into the likeness of Jesus Christ 
to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.